I'm wearing sneakers today, for the record. Does anybody care how much my tennis shoes cost? I appreciate the conversation, Joshua. I, <laughs> I appreciate your heart in all of this. I, I think the overall discussion on sneakers and preachers, preachers and sneakers, whatever it is, I, I think it's absolutely hilarious. Who am I? <laughs> I like, I'm literally having a hard time wrapping my head around this because it's just so preposterous. I don't care what you wear on your feet. I don't care what you do with your money. Like, that includes all the pastors with these multi-million dollar planes and budgets and stuff like that. I don't care. I don't care. It's preposterous. It's absolutely ridiculous. To me, it's a matter of priorities, and I think I'll, I'll explain that to you here in a minute. Who am I to say that somebody prioritizes transportation over clothing? Or somebody prioritizes clothing, shoes, over meals? Or somebody prioritizes fellowship and meals time over who cares? They're all, and we are all accountable to one and one alone. And if we're listening to him, it's the whole thing. If we're listening to him, he's gonna provide gentle correction to say, dude, what are you doing? You just spent $9 million on a plane. I didn't tell you to do that. And guess what happens if you, if you continue to go in your own direction against the Almighty? You answer to one. And that's a glorious thing, and that's a frightening thing. There's only one that matters. If that's shoes, great. If it's airplanes, great. If it's cars, minivans, roller skates. <laughs> this is so preposterous. You answer to one. Oh, by the way, uh, my shoes are $116 on Amazon, which I got for $69 because they're about four to five seasons old. Joshua, I'm really glad that you brought this up because it's actually a controversial conversation in the church and it needs to be addressed. And why not throw our two cents into the hat? So there's a guy named Robert Morris and he is the author of a book called The Blessed Life. A lot of people, a lot of Christianity has read it. It was on the New York Times bestsellers list, but most people haven't read his follow-up book, Beyond Blessed. Now in his first book, he talks about having a heart of generosity. He tells stories about how he had given everything that he owns away, not in a boastful sense, but in God asked him to give away all of his resources, all of his finances, all of his cars, all of his living, everything to follow after him. To do a Mother Teresa type thing where he gives everything away, he serves the poor, but the thing was, God kept restoring to him everything that was given away. So there's this huge divide in Christianity that says pastors or ministry people should live on nothing. The monastic style of living where you whip yourself and you live on nothing and you serve the poor. There's a piece of the puzzle in that. We need to live with generous, service-oriented hearts where it's not about the things, it's not about the stuff that we have, it's about the connection of our hearts to be rich in spirit, to be rich in soul. But there's also a principle of the kingdom of heaven that you cannot avoid. I'm not talking about the prosperity gospel. What I'm talking about is that there's a principle in the kingdom when you are a generous person, God restores you. To he who has, more will be given. If you remember in the parable of the talents, there's a, there's a person who's given five talents, there's a person who's given two talents, a servant who's given two talents, and one who's given one talent, each according to their abilities. Now the one with a bunch of ability, think about that, a bunch of ability, he sows in five, he invests five into, into his work, into whatever, this is a huge holding, these aren't small, a talent would be like equivalent to millions upon millions upon millions of dollars in our time, reinvested, and he makes 10. So he has 10 to lay before the feet of his Savior and say, you gave me five, I give back to you 10. And Jesus in red letters says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Telling of this parable. And to the two, he doubles in four. One, he says, I knew you to be a harsh and wicked man, so reaping where you didn't sow. And so I took mine and I buried it because I was scared. I took my little and I didn't increase it at all. I, I took it and, it and I just I put it in the ground. And Jesus in his red letters tells the story of the of the man who returns and finds his servant and says, says, you wicked servant. Why didn't you even put it in a bank? Why didn't you even gather some of the interest off of the bank so that you would have something more to give to me, something more to lay at my feet? Come on, guys. He's 
talking about the resources, the ability, the giftings, the stuff that's been entrusted to us that we get to lay down at the feet of Jesus, the only one who truly matters. And so there's a, there's a principle in the kingdom of when we take something that's been freely given to us and we invest it, it multiplies. When things are done in the spirit, when things are done in a heart of generosity from a proper place of stewardship, it increases. That's how kingdom finances, kingdom wealth functions. It grows, it compounds, it exponentially springs forth. Why? Because the whole world needs to look on our lives needs to look on the people of God and say, there is a God. Now there's also a juxtaposition of that to walk out immense richness and generosity in the midst of poverty. So like Paul says, whether I have boundless riches in his tent making business and in, in his ministry, whether he has boundless riches or whether he's in chains and poverty and nobody's visiting, visiting him, he has it all. It's all the same to him because he has Jesus. We get hung up on money. It's not our money. So the question becomes, what's it about? Well, one, it's about the heart, and two, it's about our priorities. We put our money where our mouth, our heart, is. Robert also wrote a second book, which if he would have known the way that people reacted to resources and finances and wealth, he probably would have written Beyond Blessed first before the blessed life. Because Beyond Blessed talks about the second leg of stewardship, and that's prioritizing your finances because it's not a give to get thing. You give because it's who you are. You've been created in him to be generous, to manage your finances well, to be under his spirit whenever he says, you're gonna need to sacrifice in certain areas so that you can abound in certain areas. Mm, that's good. Have I mentioned how good this is? Romans 14.4 <laughs> Who are you to condemn someone else's servant? Their own master will judge whether they stand or fall, and with the Lord's help, they will stand and receive his approval. It has little to do with everyone else's opinion about what shoes I wear, what coffee I drink, where I'm spending my money. The most preposterous thing. Yes, sir. I am shooting a video right now. I'm talking to you on the phone. I'm shooting a video right now. You're on. You're on. Later. Bye. I'm shooting a video. -y. I can see the argument that we should all live incredibly simple, humble lives and give everything we have to the poor. But then we would, in essence, be the poor. So why don't we, instead of wasting our time figuring out how much my tennis shoes cost? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it still gets me. Why don't we instead have a conversation with our Lord and say, Lord, search me and know me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. And deal with what he brings up. And walk in the way that he tells us to walk. And enjoy our lives and relationship. And when we can help, we might actually have the resources to help. Or if we don't, we can call upon the resources of heaven to help. All right, I'm done. Rant over. Joshua, man, you give me a second. You give me just one second because I'm gonna come up with a question that gets you like this one got me today. Whoa. Mm. Okay, Joshua. I wanna know something. Sneakers and end up talking about finances. Here, go, 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 go. Joshua, I wanna know, how do you measure growth in your church? Mm -hmm. I'm dying to know. All right, guys, I hope you're enjoying this banter back and forth between Joshua and I in the Vlog Pastor series. We're new every day, 8 a.m. Hit subscribe if you aren't already. Like this video if you like it. And I will see you in the next one. Still haven't figured out an outro. I'll see you in the next one. I'm out. So I guess it's going to be another truck vlog. Let's get all these truck vlogs. Truck vlog. I don't know why I'm talking like this today. I haven't even seen preachers and sneakers, sneakers and preachers. I haven't even looked at the Instagram site. I don't care if they spend three hundred thousand dollars on a pair of shoes. I don't care if they spend three hundred thousand dollars on a pair of shoes. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> That's up to you. If you want to follow somebody who spends three hundred dollars on a pair of shoes, it's, you know, y'all got ish. I'm a man on a mission. I'm a man on a mission. I don't need no permission. I'm a
I'm a man. 